Democracy Now!, I'm Amy Goodman. Israel's continuing its attacks on Gaza as Palestinians mark the first day of Ramadan. The death toll from Israel's five-month assault has topped 31,000. For more on the situation on the ground in Gaza, we turn to part two of our conversation with the Palestinian novelist, poet and activist Susan Abuhawa. She is the author of a number of books, including her debut novel, Mornings in Jenin. She's founder and co-director of Playgrounds for Palestine, a children's group, and the executive director of Palestine Rights Literature Festival. She joined us last week from Cairo, Egypt, one day after she returned from a two-week trip for, to Gaza. I asked her about the level of trauma that the children in Gaza are experiencing. The trauma um, is is immeasurable, frankly, not just for children, for, but for, for, for everybody. Um, I spoke with a lot of women, in particular, who uh, were recovering in a hospital or were there, or, you know, being with their children who, who, who were recovering. The stories they told me um, are just are, are out of, like, a, a Hollywood horror film. I mean, there are—I have photos of—, uh, of the backs of men where Israeli soldiers carved pictures, smiley faces, stars of David, etc., in their skin. Um, these women narrated stories to me of, uh, you know, Israeli soldiers laying them, laying hundreds of women on the ground, and then taking their their guns with the laser and laughing, and then wherever the wherever the laser landed, they shoot. Um, there, I spoke with a woman whose three-year-old daughter uh, had both of her legs shattered, um, and uh, she was in the hospital recovering. It was an intentional—she uh, was intentionally shot by a soldier. And this happened to her daughter after they killed her son, um, uh, shot him through the head in, in what she described as tank fire, toying with them for about 30 minutes before they finally uh, delivered the, the final blow um, that, that took her son. People being forced from, to walk from hospitals, severe injuries, uh, uh, people being forced to walk for hours to get to safety, um, uh, children in, uh, people in, in, you know, who were fleeing their homes trying to get to the south, uh, having to walk with their hands up, with their IDs, and if anybody dares to look down or pick anything up, they're picked off, they're literally shot by snipers. Um, the scenes that they narrated to me, I spoke with a little girl who was about eight years old, um, whose, whose face was badly burned, but, but her injuries were, were the least in the, in the whole family. The entire family had third degree burns all over their bodies. Um, and what she explained to me, it, it, again, you know, I don't know how a child, uh, survives that. I spent time in a hospital, in a maternity ward where, there were newborns who had uh, who had either uh, who who's, who who were unknown, um, or who were known but whose family was just uh, absent and and no longer there or nobody knew what knows what happened to them. These newborns are spending 24 7, 20, 20 hours 24 hours a day seven days a week in incubators without any human touch, really, except when they come to feed them, uh, because the nurses and the doctors are so exhausted and so overworked. Um, people are being discharged from hospitals with wounds uh, and, and going into tents where they don't have running water and, and proper hygiene, and they're getting horrible infections and dying from sepsis. Um, the, you know, life on the beach, uh, uh, you know, the beaches where Palestinians used to go for fun, to love, to be with family, um, and, and it's, it's torture now because a lot of tents are, are pitched in the sand, and the sand is in everything. Uh, the people's skin is scorched. I mean, children walk around with cracked cheeks from the sun and sand. Um, it, it's, it, the sand gets in every bite of food. The food that does come in, um, in into Rafah is primarily canned food, and most of it, and I think you hinted at this earlier, and I've seen it and tasted it myself, it, it is stuff that is, has clearly been sitting on shelves for decades. Um, and, and all you can taste, really, is the rancidity, metallic taste of the can 
Um, you know, this is, this, um, people, people schedule their days, they plan their days around trying to get to a single shared bathroom that is, uh, that's shared by hundreds of other families. Um, they, uh, they try to do their best with hygiene, but it's impossible. And when you have, when people succumb to living in filth, people, you know, I think maybe people in the West sort of have, have this uh, impulse, uh, impulse thought that, that most black and brown people sort of live like this. Um, so it's, it's a little humiliating to have to explain that uh, we don't actually live in filth um, and, and it's degrading beyond anything you can imagine to be forced to live like this months on end, uh, to have no way to, uh, to protect your children, no way to give them hope, um, no way to calm their fears. You know, there's no privacy in the tents um, because, this, you know, there's not enough tents for families. So families are actually separated with, with you know, dozens of women in one in one tent and dozens in another so 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 spouses cannot even uh hold each other at night when when they need that care the most um it's these these details that uh that are traumatizing en masse for children for parents for elderly people don't have medicines people are dying from from uh from lack of insulin which by the way israel has banned uh, from coming into into Gaza, um, and they're dying from uh, from diarrhea because they're drinking polluted water. And Israel has also banned water treatment, um, water filtration systems, even even handheld ones, simple personal water filtration uh, systems that you know uh, Americans use when they go camping. It is the degradation is total, Amy, and. You know, and on top of that, they're bombed day in and out, even in Rafah. When I was there, there was not a single night um, that, uh, that we didn't hear bombs. Uh, and at least once was close enough that uh, the building I was in shook. And we thought that our building had actually been hit, but it was the one, uh, it was one over from, uh, from where I was. And there was another moment too when a tent uh, by a hospital where we had just been was bombed. They bombed a tent. Um, and it actually happened to be the tent that is adjacent to uh, the tent that uh, Bisan Ode was in. And they were sitting, eating, uh, so they were sitting on the ground eating, and shrapnel just came uh, above their heads. Palestinian novelist, poet, and activist Susan Abuhawa, her debut novel, Mornings in Janine was translated into 32 languages. She joined us last week from Cairo, Egypt, one day after she returned from Gaza. To see parts one and two of our interview with her, go to democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.